boys. Hey. Sorry I'm late. I'm ready to see this vehicle you guys got to surprise me. Oh yeah, because I know last time you had just that crappy minivan. All right, all right, all right. I didn't mean to chirp as much as I did about it. I really liked that minivan. It was better than an SUV. Mm -hmm. Had great handling because it's nice and low to the ground. Yep. But, uh, but we, you know. We, since we're in Texas, we got you something real big. You got me something Texas size? Yeah. You going to... <laughs> this is a bus. From the rocks and rivers All across the city skyline Trailblazers, they haven't canceled me yet. Welcome to season two. We're in Tejas. That's right. So get your Topo Chicos ready, because we're going to see some technology. We need your own time, but the road is long. We need some men to get there just before dawn. But all you got to do is pick up the phone and dial my number on the one you want. Not the type that likes the boats, but I'm 24 7 and coast to coast and ain't no women. All right, everybody. Well, we're off to our first stop on our Texas road trip to the University of Texas. Why going back to college? The University of Texas, their additive research department is one of the world leading locations for research and development in additive manufacturing technology. So much so that companies in additive around the world are opening up U.S. divisions in Texas specifically to get in on the University of Texas's additive manufacturing technology department. Yeah, we're going back to school. Hey, Jared. Hey, Steve. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I can't wait to see your facilities and um, I see some really high speed equipment, so let's dive into it. Yeah. So tell me about this first machine here, this EOS. This is a pretty high speed machine, right? Yeah, so this is our EOS M280. This works by taking uh, metal powders, the very fine metal powders, and spreading them into a, a thin layer across a build surface. And then there's a laser, a 400 watt laser that basically welds, welds the powders together. Wow. And you can do that layer by layer and keep adding more and more to build up full 3D parts. So here you can see we have the powder feedstock. Right now we're printing in 316 stainless steel, but oh, we've, cool. we've also printed in copper, and you can print in titaniums and inconels and aluminums. Pretty much any weldable metal can be 3D okay. printed. Is this and, right here, is this an example of one of the build plates? Because yeah. that looks like what I saw in there. Yeah, so, oh, cool. so th this, is, this is a clean build plate, mm -hmm. and then this is a build plate after we've removed some parts that we had on there. So you can see, you can see the leftover support structures. Okay, that is support. I forgot yeah. to ask about that, if that has support structure to yeah, it. Yeah, so you print on a, a layer of support structures. We do about four millimeters of support structures, and that's just to allow clearance for the bandsaw mm -hmm. blade to, to come in. And, and uh, what kind of differentiation does the machine have to do with the laser to uh, go back and forth between support structure and actual part structure? Is it like a different frequency of the laser? Does, what, what has to be changed up? That's a good question. And really all it comes down to is the raster pattern. So the support structures are single laser vector scans okay. and they're, they're quite spaced out. Yeah. Whereas your part might, you know, you'll trace and basically uh, fill in the entire interior volume with a bunch of, you know, smaller spaced raster gotcha. scans. So this is a screw that I made for a biomedical engineering senior design team. And wow. they said, we need a 500 micron square channel going down the length of our screw. And so I said, no problem. Wow. And so this, the only, the only post treatment this has received was just a little bit of sandblasting and that's it. Cool. So that's more or less how it comes off the machine. I see the front bit. face of the threads is nice and smooth and the back is rough. Is that to help keep it stay put? No, that's actually a consequence of the process. And okay. this, is, this is why not I would- Not necessarily desirable. Right, this is why I would advise not printing screws if you don't have to. For this metal process, you can imagine you know, the melt temp melting temperatures of these metals are quite high. Yeah. And so they're going from essentially room temperature. The, the build plate is only heated up to 80 degrees Celsius. So 
much, much, much lower than the melting temperature of the metals. Mm -hmm. And you're, impart you're putting a laser to impart enough energy to melt them. And so this is an extremely violent process that ha produces a lot of heat. And actually, if you don't have part underneath it, uh, to wick the heat away, it'll vaporize the metal. Wow. So when you have these really shallow overhangs like that, you tend to get really poor properties on the undersurfaces because it's essentially vaporizing the metal And I can powders. imagine it's not the safest to breathe metal gas. Not, not good. <laughs> the, the machine is outfit with plenty of filters and everything, sure, sure. so it should, be, it should be okay. What's next? All right, so I think the next thing, we, I can show you some of our polymer machines. So awesome. We let's, can head over there. Check it out. All right. I want to see the polymer additive. So what is this thing? All right, so this is our stereolithography machine. So awesome. SLA, it's called an SLA 5000. And I've actually already run a print for you, okay. but it's still submerged below the resin surface. All so right. the last step in the process is to drain the part, which will lift it up, and it'll look like it's growing out of the resin surface, but the part is fully built right now. No way. You just can't see it. So all right. I'll, uh, I'll open the door while we do it so that you can, uh, you can see the process happen, but all you need to do on the computer just is hit dra yes. drain part, yeah. Is there any chance that it's staying submerged for a lengthy period of time, even though it's already been made, that anything else, any other material could cure to it? Um, not necessarily. All of these uh, panels are UV blocking. Oh, cool. So any of the light coming in from the room shouldn't affect it too much. The, the main concern you have is um, the buoyant forces, because as it's cured, it actually becomes more buoyant than the surrounding resin. Oh, so, so it could like float to the top? Essentially, but this process also uses support structures, but again, for yet for a different, different reason. reason. <laughs> to so, go against so gravity. The, these, are, these are to anchor, anchor the parts to the build plate and also <laughs> prevent, as the recoder is recoding a new layer of resin, you wow. want to make sure that the, the part doesn't get dislodged, which what happens sometimes if you have a part that gets dislodged. So next I can show you our uh, other liquid polymer machine if you'd like to see it. Yes, I would love to see it. All right, it. so it's, it's back here. This is our Stratasys J750 digital anatomy printer. Wow. And so this is a polyjet style machine. And so it actually uses the same types of resins that our stereolithography machine uses, but prints them in a totally different way that allows you to actually print with multiple materials at the same time. So this is the material cabinet, so you can load up you can see up to eight materials, but two of them are dedicated for support structures. So you can print six different part materials all at the same time. But okay. I've actually prepared a, a surprise part for you. It's in the machine. All you have to do is lift up the lid and check it out. All right, let's see. Oh, I can see it a little bit. Oh, no way! Look at that, man! <laughs> all right, <laughs> so awesome. ho hopefully you don't care that I infringed on your trademark a little bit, but I, I did my, my version of your logo Not for, at your, all. for your series. So you can see this is all printed. This is, this is how, how it comes off the print bed. I haven't done anything since it finished wow. printing. And so we can combine these materials in different colors of materials to get uh -huh. the full color gamut. So right now I only have uh, the grayscale loaded in. Now, how, how easy is it to take this off of the bed? I can let you do it if you want. Oh, I mean, I don't want to break it. No, you're I'll not, not going to break it. Well, you might break the part, in which case I'd have to print you a new one. But it's, it's, okay. it's not that difficult. I'll it's, try. It's not rocket science. You got a spade and then... All you do is shovel it under, and this prints on a bed of support material. So you're okay. actually going through the support material. All right. So you're not breaking like the back side of it. You're just right. So I mean, you want to keep it about as flat as you can while you go through it. But then all you need to do is kind of push in there, and so you can see that support yeah. material already flaking away. Wow, man. All right. Go for Let it. Let me give it a go. And I'm not going to hurt the bed of oh, this no, no, machine no, 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 at no, all. No, no, no. Oh wow. Oh wow. It's not as bad as I thought at all. Yep, there you go. So this is the support material. And so we can scrape <gasps> off that the excess support oh, yeah, from the there back. You can see like the firm material. Mm -hmm. And then this is the support. Wow. That's really cool. Oh, and it's a tire tread too. Is this our logo? <laughs> so you guys didn't do anything. <laughs> That's awesome. Hell yeah. Well, this has been a real pleasure and a lot of fun here at the University of Texas at Austin. Um, this is essentially the birthplace of additive manufacturing. I remember doing a quick Google search on what is additive manufacturing, what is 3D printing, and 
Uh, one of the first things that I saw on the Wikipedia page for it was that it started in the 80s. And I truly found that unbelievable. But uh, man, there have been leaps and bounds changed just from the fact that when we went into Best Buy earlier today and they said there are no PS5s available, the controller for the first 3D printer was in fact a Commodore 64. And it was like, man, I wasn't even alive for the Commodore 64, so. Lots happened, it's been fun, and uh, let's see what, uh, what comes next. Welcome to Texas.